All right, first round. Um, <laughs> probably a keep. Um, we do need to draw some spells, though. If we get bum rushed here, then uh, ooh, that's not good. Well, that's a lot less bad. Uh, we'll have all of our colors here. Uh, decent start, and we're going to have a, a turn early summoner to help stabilize us as well. But um, that being said, we also don't have any early plays. But we've got a lot of twos and threes in the deck that we can draw, and as long as we're not under like severe duress here, we'll be okay. And yeah, there we go. So Slitherhead definitely does not qualify as severe duress, and him having no two drop helps too. We're going to get to play the Denizen. He did not attack with his Slitherhead. All right. Must have thought we had something, I guess. Um, yeah, so I think we can just slam the uh, the denizen here. I think that's perfectly reasonable line of play. And uh, the next turn, we can evaluate. We'll have uh, we'll have access to a few things. I think what we want to try to set up eventually is uh, a situation where we can play in flinching courage and have Boros charm mana ups just in case he tries to kill it. All right. Yeah, especially now. Now that he's played the Snare Squad, our, our Court Street Denizen, of course, gets a lot worse. Um, let's see. So if I play the Clue Stone now, I'll have five mana this turn, six mana the next turn. So that means that next turn, I can uh, I can play Unflinching Courage, have Boros Charm up, attack him, and then when I untap, I get to play Tristani's Summoner. Which is pretty good. Or I can just risk it and just play Unflinching Courage right now and get in for four. Which is pretty good. And then next turn, I play Gruel Clue Stone. And you get to have Boros Charm up. And then, so basically, he has to kill it on his turn. He has to like untap and kill our guy. I don't do anything right now, although I do make him use a mana up. Yeah, I think I'm just going to make him use a mana up here. I think it's I think playing it safe's okay. We're at 17. We're going to take 4 damage here, but he missed the land drop and uh if he wants to use his snare squad, he's going to have to uh he's going to have to pay the mana. And that could severely slow down what he's trying to do for the turn. But it looks like he's going to take the aggressive route here and do it. See what he's got as a follow-up play. A grim roustabout. Is he going to? Yeah, he's going to unleash it as well. So we're for sure going to get in here. Oh, that actually changes things a little too. Because now I can just play that. Mm, I think I like sticking with our or original plan of just unflinching courage in here. Getting in for four, which is going to be sort of more damage prevention than we would have gotten anyway from the Indric. And then if he goes to kill our guy, I mean, if he's got Edict or whatever, then then we get kind of screwed. But we, even then we gain four life. If he doesn't, though, we can get him with Boros Charm pretty good here. <clears throat> this Snare Squad definitely changes how the game is going to play out. But best case scenario, he goes for some removal spell on this thing. How many of these creatures are white? Two of them? Yeah. So if we play Summoner next turn, we do get to tap down two of his guys as well. Kind of interesting. All right, I assume that he's going to just send the team here, but this is looking pretty good if that's the case because uh, we, we've got a lot more mana. Oh, interesting. He's leaving back his 2-1, so he's kind of representing uh, Smite here, I guess, or Arrows or something, or just a 3-drop. Okay, but that three drop doesn't have a block here, so this is actually pretty sweet for us. Um, 
So I think I'm just going to play Summoner and just tap down this and this. And then just attack him. I can attack him now. It doesn't really do much though, because even if he stacks all three guys up, the best case for me is that I play Boros Charm, I get rid of this and this, which are kind of non-cards at the moment, as he can't even activate this, and it doesn't attack, and also this is like fine, and he might even be better off in the graveyard for him. And then my and then my backup plan is just to play a Towering Indrik, which is okay, but I think I'd rather just do some big stuff here, so let's just do big stuff. Let's summon. So I want to tap... Uh, I want to tap this guy for sure. And then, yeah, I'm just going to tap Slitherhead. I mean, it doesn't block this thing effectively anyway, but I would welcome this block happening. All right, so like I said when we drafted it, you know, th this is why this card's awesome, because we were kind of getting swarmed a little bit. And, I mean, we're at a, a reasonable life total, don't get me wrong. I'm, our opponent's been stuck on mana forever, but... He doesn't have attacks now. Like, he can tap this thing down, but then he's losing, like, multiple creatures here. So it looks like he's going to set up for a beta strike. And uh, I'm going to prevent him from doing that. That's a good draw. Um, I'm definitely going to take the offensive here. I am going to be attacking him with a lot of creatures. In fact, I'm probably just going to send the team. It's a little bit awkward that I can't Boros Charm and Gorklan Rampager. So if I attack with this guy... This guy doesn't do anything. Maybe I just attack with my two 4-4 Tramplers. Because I think my 3-3 three three is just going to get blocked here anyway. My 2-2 two two is going to get blocked here anyway. So that leaves the rest of it. So yeah, let's just attack with those two guys. Uh, I don't have any white creatures to play before combat. But I'll probably end up Boros Charming here. And then playing Indrik. If he takes too much damage, I can just kill him with Boros Charm, but... Alright, so he's going to stack everybody on the Denizen. Okay, so I've got some options here. I can... Um, I can Boros Charm... I mean, I can Gore Clan Rampager this guy and just get him for 8. And then that puts him to two. I and then the next time I untap, I Boros Charm him. That seems like a pretty solid plan here. I can also order the blockers, Boros Charm, and kill two things, basically. So I can kill, like, Undercity Informer and Shadow Alley Denizen, which does certainly help clear things out. I don't think he's going to have a reasonable way to interact with this or this, though, so I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to let him trade off two of his guys. So I'm going to kill Informer, and I'm going to kill Shadow Alley Denizen, just because I can kill two creatures that way, and I don't want to put Slitherhead in the yard. I could just kill Snare Squad, but we're at 17 going to 21 here. It's not like we're under any real pressure here anyway. Um so yeah, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to... Because uh, I can't think of a... There's no card here that I don't think you can get me on this. I'm just going to dome him with this thing. I could do it on this guy and take out a bunch of his dudes too. But with the mana that he has up, I, f I feel like Boros Charm is just going to kill him. Normally I do it on the creatures. Because for 8 I can kill 3, 4... Five, six, seven, eight. I can kill basically four of his dudes. He wouldn't take any damage, but... Yeah, that would be my normal line, is just to kill as many guys as I could and gain a bunch of life with this. But I just can't think of a way, at least off the top of my head here, that he can interact with this. And uh, if he can't interact with this, interacting with this is even harder. So it basically means that he has to do 21 points of damage to me with like three or four creatures next turn. And I still get to play my Endric as well. So I just I just don't really see a way for him to get out of this. If there was like I said, if if he had if he had three mana up, I wouldn't make this play, for example. Um, because he could have like arrows. 
of justice or whatever, like something. But I just can't think, of, at least in this set, of anything that punishes me for this. Like, he can smite this guy, but he still loses if he does that. Okay, so those two guys down. Indrik. And I'm just going to... The, the the one way that we could lose, I suppose, it's interesting. I, I actually probably just shouldn't have played the Indrik. I didn't play the land, but I, I think the correct play is just to, just to pass. Because if he goes land and... Um, well, actually, you know what? This is interesting. This is a very small thing that I'm talking about here. Like, we, we are in an absolutely dominating board position. Don't, don't get me wrong. But I'm talking about little nuts and bolts stuff here. If I play the Indrik, it gives me an extra lethal creature so I can just attack with everything. Remember, this can't block. So he's got three dudes versus a bunch of my guys. But if I keep it in my hand and he plays a land and plays Purge the Profane, then I can still kill him. He gains two, and then I can still just do four. So I think it was correct to keep it in my hand. But anyway, whatever. I'm playing around, you know, uncommons that are whatever that are, you know, that are only in one set of three. Like, this isn't a, a reasonable thing. I'm just saying, look, when it comes down to, like, the very nitty-gritty of it, yeah, you got to make these decisions. And, and it's worth it to as an exercise to think through them. Even though it's easy to say, yeah, we would just would have won in, in, in either way, which is probably true. Um, i got to mulligan this one. Oh, I can keep this one. It looks kind of like our others. It doesn't have a whole lot going on, but I mean, ooh, mountain? Drawing a mountain would be awesome. It means we can cast this and then this on time. Uh, Slitherhead, Godless Shrine, Intimidate. Yeah, you got it. We're going to take some beats here. We're going to try to set up for a big turn where we get back into it with this on this or this, but... We haven't really drawn too many twos. Like I said, this one, awkward two drop, and you know we knew it going in. Oh, he already passed the turn. All right, I guess I'll play a land for the turn then. Jeez. Moto's kind of laggy right now. Yeah, it's very laggy, actually. All right, greenside watcher, turn four play, go. He's got a Golgari long legs. Yeah, this could get ugly if we don't draw a land here. Nothing has intimidate. I don't want to block Slitherhead, so there you go. Yeah, well, there is a land, so that's a good start. So let's just play our land, or play our guy. And we're going to take a hit here. No doubt about that, but <clears throat> since Golgari uh, long legs is green, like all of our dudes can block it. I would like to get rid of this denizen, though. Don't get me wrong. Um, five. All right, so let's block this one like that. It's got fatal fumes. Okay. Well. So if we play this, we go four... We hit him for four, he goes to 16. We go to 11, we take five, six, seven. So yeah, we're still alive. We need to hit a land so we can get this guy down, obviously. The reason I'm attacking and not leaving him up to block is if he plays a black creature. Um, well, I guess I can still block. Yeah, it, it's probably just safer to make sure that we guarantee getting the life here, but... Because the thing is, I'm really playing for a land. If we if we draw a land, then I can play this guy, and, and we're looking a lot more stable. Because this guy can just keep bashing in there, and I mean, if he trades this off, then we're a little sad, but getting that thing off the board would be super nice. Yep. Blood Scrivener. Interesting. All right, well, we drew the land. And I just wonder if now we can sit back a little bit. Probably not. Yeah, I think I still need to attack here. Next turn we probably can, but uh, for now, I feel like playing this guy out. The, the, down, the, the problem if we sit back is that if he plays a black creature, he can give this thing Intimidate and it actually can attack through us. 
and we're at four, so we're two turns away from just being dead. And I don't want to give him a two-turn clock where we're just passing and just hoping he doesn't draw stuff, especially because if he can dump his hand, his Scrivener's going to be online here. Of course, we've drawn, like, all of our red spells, but okay, that's bad. It's good that he didn't do anything, though. Um... Yeah, so we definitely just have to attack here, and I think we might even just have to attack with both. We're going to go to 12. He has 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He has 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He's got 10 power, so yeah, we just need to attack with both, I think. I mean, he's also at 12. All right, so he's going to he's gonna make this trade, which, which is going to take away a lot of his potency here, um, but... The, uh, the snare squad's a big issue for sure. All right, so he took some damage from this thing, but he also drew an extra card, so he's really happy to do it. Yeah, if we can hit lands and or red mana, I think we're going to be in really good position to win this game. If we don't, uh, he's definitely got the edge here, as he's going to be able to consistently kind of dump his hand and keep getting value from Blood Scrivener. Uh, Balustrade Spy is a good one. Yeah, he can give... We can't block anyway. So we're taking the full brunt here. Two, three, four. We're taking five here no matter what, basically. All right. Well, Eyes in the Skies would have been okay, but we did increase our chance of hitting a, f a mountain. <laughs> oh, it looks like he's scared a little bit now. He's not attacking with his other guys. That's really kind of weird. Oh, man. Hit the mountain just like that? Yeah, we can set up a kill here potentially. We could even just kill him here if we're lucky. So I attack with Scarab. If he if he chumps with the one drop, it's exactly lethal. If I send in this, he's just going to block it here. So there's hardly a point to that. All right, so let's get in there with this thing. So he's got to put basically both of these on it or throw something beefier in front of it. And if he does correctly double block... All right, that's fine too. He might be tempted to put a bunch of guys in front of it to try to actually kill it, though. But we did show him this last time, so he's got to be very aware. All right, so I think we just let him chump here. Oh, he's at zero cards, so he's actually at virtual six. Oh, man. So close. If we Gore Clan Rampager here, it's eight. He takes four. He goes to three, and then he's going to be at two. So we do get to untap and kill him. But I can also just play any number of these things. And I'm really happy to have that snare squad gone. So that thing's going to be gone. So he's going to be able to attack us for two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he doesn't have lethal. And that's if he plays a black creature here. I'm trying to figure out what my play. I, I got to use this red mana. I need to cast Boros Charm. I need to cast two, like a red spell this turn, and then when I untap a red spell, it's just going to be a matter of which one's going to actually kill him. And I think if I Gore Clan Rampager here, that gets him to four, or it gets him to three, and then to two, and I think I just untap and Boros Charm him. Because he doesn't quite have lethal. He needs to find a way to get another damage in, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then he has to play a black creature so I can't block two. Yeah, all right. And go. So he's at two. So yeah, we get to untap and kill him. But if he can find any way to get like an extort trigger down, he's got two cards to work with, remember, because of Scrivener. 
if he can uh, if he can find a scavenge that he can discard. I, I'm trying to think of anything here, but a way to gain life could potentially do it. Five. He could have had something like Shadow Slice to finish us off. All right, we're at five. He plays a land for the turn, and I think we're just going to get him here. Yeah, I'm just going to go for it. See if that's good. All right, we got him. Okay, we'll see you guys in the second round.